What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some crazy battles in the Fossil Cup, running a triple water and flying meme team with Shadow Gyarados, Mantine and Pelipper. This is actually the second time I've run this team in the Fossil Cup, but last time was pre-surf lantern so it wasn't nearly as common, but Registeel was absolutely everywhere so I ran Waterfall on my Gyarados, but perhaps this time around I should have ran Dragon Breath as it would be a lot better up against the lantern. I wasn't going to run this team again, but I saw a few things that reminded me of it so I had to give it a go. Of course Lantern gobbles this team up for breakfast, but this team beats pretty much everything else in the meta, so I still went positive on the day, although if you are seeing Lanterns and basically every single team, then I definitely don't recommend you try it, but you could run it as an ABB style team with something in the front that does beat Lantern. With that being said, let's just get into the question of the day. If you could ban any one Pokemon from the Fossil Cup meta, which Pokemon would it be and why? Let me know in the comment section down below. And with that being said, let's get into the battles now. All right, so going into the first battle, we lead into a Lantern. And if you're wondering how we play out this matchup, it's pretty simple. We go for the top left button and we surrender immediately. But into the next battle, we see a Shadow Alolan Sandslash in the lead. A pretty decent lead here because they would resist the fast moves on both my two Pokemon in the back but waterfalls are seriously chunking. We shield up the ice punch, we go for one more waterfall, throwing on the correct timing, go for the aqua tail, and then we will go for one more waterfall, then swap, catch the damage onto my Mantine, and basically, in this team, I use Mantine as a damage sponge because it really can't hit very hard. It does have the ability to debuff with the bubble beams, but I don't really like going for bubble beam. So we go for the aerial ice here, Mantine, quite bulky, so we should just about live a shadow ball from this range, which we do, and we live one more hex allowing us to make it to the aerial ace and this is going to do some decent damage. It puts them into farm down range, which is really important here because I can safely shield once on my Pelipper and go for a full farm down. So I am going to think about shielding. We do shield at the last second. It is the Shadow Ball, and now they will not make it to another Shadow Ball as we get the full farm down, and the opponent is going to wait out the Switchcock here before coming in with the Pelipper. They try to make the catch there, but I hold on to the energy. We now go for the Weather Ball. I thought actually I should have undercharged that a lot more than I did, but we still take them out, and now we go straight for the hurricane here and hurricane does connect it does huge damage essentially winning me the game now i can let this move go through no point in swapping out they only make it to the weather ball we will get the farm down so the opponent concedes the match so GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, we see Gyarados into Swampert. So a very good lead and a very good Pokemon to see all around. The opponent safe swaps into Ferrothorn. Now this is also a bit tricky, like the Lantern, as it does have an electric type charge move, but it is a lot more playable because of course, this damage is neutral. Now we are going to shield the first move. This is, I believe the only time I actually shielded with my Mantine here, but I kind of have quite a lot of residual energy. And if we can go for an Aerial Ace, either grab a shield or deal big damage, I'll happily take either. Either, and now I will let the Mantine go down, but the opponent baits with a Power Whip, absolutely fine with me. We're now going to go for another Aerial Ace, throwing just before they make it to the next charge move. The opponent actually, actually uses the shield there, so we've now got a shield advantage. I'm happy to let it go down, come in with my Pelipper, and once again, I will shield once and fully farm down this Ferrothorn. They bait me with the Power Whip, but they don't make it to another charge move, and we do have a bit of energy loaded here. So the opponent comes in with a Registeel. Now this is also quite bad, especially since all shields are down, but we've got so much loaded energy on the Pelipper. I will make it to three Weather Balls before they get to the Zap Cannon, but I do have to be a little bit wary about them over farming because if they over farm perfectly, they will then outpace me to a charge move on my Gyarados. So I'm actually gonna swap, catch the Zap Cannon onto my Gyarados, knowing that I will now easily outpace them to the Weather Ball here, guarantee the KO here. So the opponent over farms a bit. They do play it quite smartly here. They swap back into the Swampert. They go for a Hydro Cannon. That doesn't do much damage, but a second one will pretty much take me out here. So I don't know, is Hurricane gonna be enough damage to take them out? No, but we get the farm down and now we come out with a Weather Ball loaded. Weather Ball will easily be enough damage from this range to take out the Registeel and we take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, we see Gyarados into Lucario. So pretty good lead because we are running the waterfall. Dragon Breath would be resisted. They save swap into Pelipper. Now, I don't really care about switch advantage. Perhaps I should go for a bubble beam anyways, just to make sure that the hurricane does less damage. But like I said, I don't really care. We can let this move go through. Probably gonna be the hurricane. It is the hurricane. And now they will also make it 
to the weather ball before we make it to an aerial ace. I thought no point going for a bubble beam here. Weather ball does take us out, but we should be able to easily farm them down. Now they will make it to one final weather ball before we get the farm down, but it is resisted, doesn't really matter. And this energy on Pelipper is gonna be very nice, assuming they don't have a lantern in the back. So the opponent's gonna wait out the switchcock here. They come in with a shadow cradilly. I'm gonna full send the hurricane here. No point baiting. I mean, they do have two shields, but hurricane does get shielded, which is unfortunate. And now the opponent goes for one extra before throwing their charge move. I'm gonna let the rock side go through. It does take us out. Now I'm putting it all onto my shadow Gyarados. They make it to the next rock side and they throw straight away. They go for the rock side there and we're gonna over farm, farming to the back to back aqua tails. And now here, if the opponent wants to the shield, they're still one bullet seed away from the next move. Actually, know they were at the move but we win the cmp tie anyways and aquatel takes out the cradilly and now the opponent needs to make it to back to back charge moves to take me out or go for the farm down they get neither as we make it to the aquatel and aquatel will be taking out the lucario and we take that game so GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, we see a Pelipper in the lead. So gonna say swap into my Mantine and the opponent is running a Lantern. Now, we're not seeing it in the lead, so I am actually gonna play this out. I do have a slight energy advantage here. So gonna go for the Bubble Beam. This will lower their attack. Although Thunderbolt will easily one-shot us, even if we like triple debuff them. So yeah, it doesn't really matter as they do go for that Thunderbolt. We come back in with the Gyarados here and this is actually just going to be a surf, so I'm going to let it go through, which kind of seems dumb because obviously they're just going to fully fast move, farm me down. I already know I'm losing this game, but I want to see just sort of how we can play it out. So we swap into Pelipper, and the opponent is actually going to bank a ton of energy before swapping into Lucario. So what the heck, we're just going to go for the Hurricane, and Hurricane will be taking out Lucario, and the opponent is going to come in with their own Pelipper once again. So I'm going to let this move go through once again as well. It's over. I don't know why I'm playing this out. I'm kind of just wasting my my opponent's time which is not great for my opponents so I do apologize now but it makes for some good content as we nuke them with the hurricane and now they will be able to fully spark farm us down and we do lose that game so yeah lantern pretty much impossible to beat although if I was running dragon breath on my Gyarados maybe we have a chance but into the next battle the opponent safe swaps into a razor leaf cartana bit of an interesting safe swap because it is not safe at all but we go for the bubble bean straight away grabbing a shield which might seem strange but it's going to make this match up very close here but we are just about able to wing attack farther down coming out with a bubble beam loaded which is going to throw straight away into what we assume to be the marwile coming back in it is so we go for the bubble beam and actually we should now make it to a final bubble bean this will double debuff this Marwal, so they're going to be forced to swap out pretty much straight away and they do they swap into ludicolo here we're going to come in with the pelipa and i'm just going to full send the hurricane this bait would be quite risky so we just full send the hurricane and hurricane takes out the ludicolo and now this is game over unfortunately they've only made it to a power punch so i can let this move go through it doesn't do much damage. It is resisted. We go for the weather ball. This is neutral damage. It is a cheap move, but it does about half their health. And we're able to wing attack, farm down the Marwal, and take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, we see Gyarados into Pelipper. So once again, gonna say swap. Hopefully no lantern in the back. It's actually a Toga Damaru this time around. And this seems awful, but it's actually a lot more playable just because bubble beams are actually neutral damage here. And if they want to take me out, they have to go for wild charge, which will debuff their defense by two stages. Instead, they bait with a Fell Stinger. And this is once again, just another Fell Stinger. I have no idea what they're doing here, but yeah, this is very strange because they are a legend player, by the way. We go for another Bubble Beam, debuffing their attack once again. So they've now got the same attack as stat as they normally would have because they've also boosted their attack by two stages. We go for another Bubble Beam. They have farmed up a bit extra this time before going for the Fell Stinger once again. What are they doing? And now they CMP tie here. This should still be another Fell Stinger. And if it is, then we will still live it. We get off another Bubble Beam and we make this matchup way closer than it should be. They do just barely farm me down, but we can come in with either Pokemon, get the farm down. We come in with the Pelipper and the opponent is gonna come back in with their own Pelipper, and they are going to be over farming massively, allowing me to make it to the Hurricane. We're gonna full send it once again, and Hurricane grabs a shield from the opponent. At this point, I'm just gonna let the Pelipper go down. But the opponent baits with a Weather Ball, so we can let that go through. They're now just going to throw another Weather Ball, so I will also let this move go through. And then swap into my Shadow Gyarados. They make it to another move. At this point, I will start shielding. Shadow Gyarados is the Glassier Pokemon on this team. But I will be able to make it to the Aqua Tail. 
but the opponent catches, but they catch onto an S Cavalier. So not the best catch there for them, as I will be able to now go for the Aquatel. And from this range, this should be enough damage to take out the S Cavalier. They come back in with the Pelipper. They're already at another charge move. I'm just going to let it go through. We've got our own Weather Ball loaded on my Pelipper, and we've still got a shield remaining. So even if they had yet another Weather Ball, it doesn't matter. We take out the Pelipper, and we take that game. So a triple water and flying team just beat an electric type. So speaking of electric types, we're going to see Lantern in the lead. This is actually what happens if I do try to play out the lead matchup here. We swap into the Mantine, go for a Bubble Beam, and Bubble Beam is obviously going to debuff their attack. They're going to stay in because this is a great matchup for them, but they over farm a lot, allowing me to make it to a second Bubble Beam. Now, if I was running Dragon Breath on Gyarados, then I'd actually be pretty happy with this scenario because I would be able to output a lot of damage with my fast move pressure. But unfortunately, whilst I'm running Waterfall, there's not a lot we can do. So I come in with my Pelipper, gonna use the shield here, and the opponent does full send the Thunderbolt there. And they swap into a Metagross. Now, what I should do here is just farm to 100 energy and then swap into my Shadow Gyarados and go for a full farm down, but I don't. I end up throwing a Weather Ball, and now what I'm gonna do is farm up to 100 energy once again, or thereabouts. Then we swap into Gyarados, but we don't get much energy on the Gyarados. So if they come back in with the Lantern, which they do, we only make it to an Aquatel. This should be grabbing a shield anyways, because the threat of a crunch is gonna be more than a Hurricane, but the opponent can now go for a charge move. This will be a Surf, but it still takes me out. We come back in with the Pelipper, we go straight for the Hurricane, and Hurricane from this range still doesn't do enough damage to take them out. We go for the farm down, because I was thinking it's probably something weak to the flying typing in the back but unfortunately they make it to the thunderbolt and they do take us out but ggs to that opponent there into the next game another alolan sand slash in the lead and we're gonna play out this lead matchup the opponent safe swaps into pelipper i'm gonna bank an aquatel before swapping into my mantine and once again don't really care if i win or lose switch advantage here they full send the hurricane i'm actually gonna go for the bubble beam first this time around knowing that i should now be able to just barely live a weather ball and make it to the airy lace anyway so i'm gonna let this move go through it is just a weather ball, and now we do make it to a last second Aerial Ace, and from this range, Aerial Ace will be taking out the Pelipper, and they are probably going to come back in with the Alolan Sand Slash. And that's exactly what they do. They get off two Shadow Claws. They swap into Jellicent, and we don't throw straight away. We see it is the Jellicent, so we can go for the Crunch. It does connect whilst they still had both shields in play. And now this is just a Surf. I can let this move go through. Happy to do so. We swap into our Pelipper, and they will be able to make it to one final charge route before going down, but it's just another Surf. This is resisted. We easily tank it. They come in with the Sand Slash, and now all I have to do is double shield and get off three Weather Balls, and the first two should be grabbed the shield and the final one should be dealing enough damage to put them into range where I can go for an Aquatel but here we go for the second weather ball I'm always over farming so they don't quite know how much energy I've got the opponent actually lets that one go through doesn't really matter which one they let through as I will make it to the third weather ball and at this point it's going to be game over all I do here is make sure I don't try and swap and make the throw straight away because if I swap that does take one turn and if they end up throwing at the same time I could actually lose the game there but instead the opponent over farms too much allowing me to make it to another weather ball to take them out into the next game we see Jellicent in the lead I'm gonna safe swap straight away what I did do sort of in later games is stay in initially and then catch the shadow ball onto my Gyarados because Hex is very low fast move pressure so it's actually quite useful to build energy on my Gyarados as it does hit a lot harder than the Mantine but here we go for a bubble beam thinking that a bubble beam plus aerial ace would take them out before they make it to the shadow ball but that's actually not the case so definite misplay but like I said already it doesn't really matter we don't it's an AAA style our team so it doesn't really matter uh, which alignment we get with this team we do waterfall farm them down here and the opponent's going to come back in with the jellicent they did swap out straight away so he can go for five waterfalls go for the crunch and this will be grabbing a shield from the opponent there otherwise crunch would pretty much take them out from that range i'm going to shield it up and it is just a surf bait which is unfortunate but we swap back into the pelipper here and 
I'm just happy to let this move go through. I'm expecting an S Cavalier in the back, but the opponent base with the Surf. And now I'm just gonna overfarm massively. No, actually just go straight for a Hurricane and Hurricane takes out the Jellison and it is the S Cavalier in the back. So all I've got to do is go for one Weather Ball here. And if this does connect, they're in range where I can easily Waterfall farm them down. The opponent kind of has to overfarm anyway. So we go for a second Weather Ball and this is gonna be game over for the opponent. They will be able to make it to a charge move, but they have to go for Mega Horn to take us out out because drill run is not enough damage and now we swap into Gyarados just going to be really safe here and go for the shield it is another drill run that would have done nothing put the waterfall KOs and we take that game and into the next battle we see Shadow Gyarados into a Polyrath so a pretty awkward situation but they swap out straight away into Seeking I'm just going to go for the Aqua Tail here, knowing that even though it is resisted, it probably grabs a shield, and it does, and we win the CMP tie. So I'm actually happy to let this move go through. Icy Wind won't quite take us out, and the Polyrath will have a rough time trying to farm down a Gyarados in the end game, anyways. So I don't mind leaving the Gyarados fairly low. We swap into Mantine, unfortunately losing the CMP tie there, but it doesn't really matter. We go for the Aerial Ace here, and now I will be able to make it to a Bubble Beam just before they make it to the next Icy Wind, and from this range, even debuffed. It will be taking out the Sea King, and the opponent is going to be coming in with an Empoleon. So this is a bit rough, but we can just go for the debuff here, going for the Bubble Beam, and that will lower their attack. I could go for another Bubble Beam, but they're probably just going to swap out eventually. So we'll just go for the Aerial Ace, as it does do a little bit more damage. We then swap into Gyarados, get off the Waterfall damage, and we put them into range where I can easily just spam Weather Balls with my Pelipper. We come in with the Pelipper, they swap out straight away, clearing the debuff, but it doesn't help them as they come in with the Polyrath. We're going to full send the Hurricane straight away. Hurricane takes out the Polyrath, and now it's game over for my opponent they can spam these draw packs i'm gonna shield anyways just in case they're running blizzard but it doesn't look likely so we can just shield the next one here as i will force them to throw another charge move whereas if i let that move go through they could just try to commit to the waterfall farm down you're gonna see anyways that draw pack doesn't really do that much damage but just playing it safe they go for the next drill pick, and we did CMP tie, losing the CMP tie, but it doesn't matter. Weather Ball will be taking out the Empoleon from this range, and we take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, we see Gyarados into Pelipper once again. So gonna say swap into my Mantine. The opponent stays in initially before swapping into Registeel. Now this is bad, but not quite as bad as the Lantern. So I'm a little bit relieved to see it here. We go for the Bubble Beam, debuffing them, and then I realize, what's the point in debuffing them? Lock-ons are still going to do one damage anyways, and we're going to be shielding up the Zap Cannon on my Gyarados, so we might as well go for the Aerial Ace, as it does do a little bit more damage, hardly noticeable, but it all adds up over time. We're going to come in with the Gyarados here, and if they don't get the debuff with the Zap Cannon, especially since they throw on alignment here, I should be able to fully waterfall, farm them down, but they do get the debuff, and now I will have to throw a charge move, so I'm going to play Play it safe here throw early we build up to the back-to-back -back aquatels we go for the aquatel there they come in with the pelipper we can now go for a crunch and then i'm going to swap into my pelipper we grab the shield from the pelipper we swap into our own and they do have a lantern in the back so maybe reading my team there unfortunately lantern especially when they're hiding it in the back just absolutely going to obliterate us but into i believe the final battle we lead into jellison and you can see we are playing it differently now we swap out there after five catching the shadow ball onto my mantine my damage sponge and they come in with a Skarmory. So this is a pretty bad matchup, but I can debuff them a lot. So we're going to go for the first Bubble Beam here. We're not going to be grabbing shields at all, but I will be forcing them to throw their energy eventually because if they try to wing it, uh, air slash farm us down, it's going to be a very long battle. Here, unfortunately, we get a bit of uh, starter lag there, and so I don't get off that final bubble beam which is actually going to be really costly for me here because i go for the crunch and they just barely live whereas if i landed that bubble beam first not only would i debuff them so the brave bird would do less but the crunch would have just taken them out anyway so that is really frustrating for me but here we're going to go for another crunch into this jellison and this should be grabbing a shield from the opponent we get the shield from the opponent so i'm just going to let this move go through the opponent full sends the Shadow Ball there. We come in with the Pelipper and they are low enough where I should be able to over farm a lot and then just go for the back to back Weather Balls. So we're going to shoot up the Shadow Ball here and the opponent is staying in. So clearly weak to the Pelipper in the back. So we go for the first Weather Ball. It goes unshielded and they've got a Lucario in the back. So I could go for three Weather Balls here, but instead I'm just going to full send the Hurricane, not expecting a shield. 
and the opponent no shields set. We nuke the Lucario and we take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. Obviously a lot more Lantern running around in the meta this time around, which is quite unfortunate as it was basically a guaranteed loss. But aside from that, I still had a ton of fun running this team. And if you did enjoy today's video, then make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.